Coming up, Zach Wilkerson hits the Texas Voices stage at Mile Zero Fest. More tonight. Oh. It's such a it's such a long and rewarding road, you know. If you I think if you walk it the right way, it can be such a long and rewarding road. Yeah. More on his new album Mud and the inspiration behind it. Plus, shipwrecked but not lost. But you found your happy place. Definitely. <laughs> How Key West musician Turner Harrison found his sound and his community. And later. Making it Key Western, Clay Hollis hits the coolest surf shop on the island. Nobody's going to give it to you. And, and I've known that for a long time. So you got to go down and, and, and knock all the doors down yourself. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Texas Voices features the artists, musicians, and creatives of our great state next. Welcome to the beautiful Ibis Bay Beach Resort in sunny Key West, Florida. I'm Lindsay Lippman. We were blown away by the bluesy, soulful sounds of Zach Wilkerson and invited him to perform on the Texas Voices stage at Lost Boy Creations during Mile Zero Fest. He shared his stories and his new music. Soul, rock, and blues. Zach Wilkerson's roots run through a labyrinth of lyrics that get you well, lifted. We got the poor man blues, everybody got the poor man blues, whole world knows it. Poor man blues, you don't know nothing about the poor man blues, good God. Hey. His upcoming album was the offspring of a songwriting group with weekly prompts. Not everything's a keeper, he says, until he struck mud. Prompt one week was mud. Yeah. And uh, it was right about the time my son was having his first existential crisis. And I was glad to be with him to explain he had many more coming. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what the song I wrote that week was about. Yeah. It was just about how um, life is not always as simple well, life is much more complicated than we make it, maybe. Maybe, yeah. that's the, maybe that's the message from the song. But yeah, so that's kind of what the song Mud is about. And then a lot of the record was written during lockdown when a lot of musicians, including myself, were having a pretty hard time. And so there was a lot of things that, you know, I was, I was also processing some things as well, mm -hmm. and, you know, while writing this record. But it was... Uh, the whole record really just comes from the song club and uh, being in this group of eight other songwriters and uh, having to, the way, well, you have to write a song every week yeah. and, and show it to the group, mm -hmm. you know? And so there's a certain element of, uh, you know that the song needs to be at a level that it's good enough that you would show these eight other professional right. songwriters. Yeah. So you don't want to just, <laughs> You literally don't want to oh, just mail in yeah. some trash, you know? And so, in fact, trash was one of the prompts. And I wrote a song called Trash. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the, the group was great because you had these other writers who were constantly keeping you accountable every week to keep producing something new. So we got a lot of songs out of it, and I'm still writing yeah. songs. In fact, I wrote, I'm still in the club, and I mm -hmm. finished my song about 8.30 this morning, Yeah. because I knew I had a day for this stuff today. Love me like you're losing me. His voice is the kind that makes you put the phone down and feel the vibration, something he honed in Amarillo. People and Meemaw would go out to the East Ridge Bowling Alley in Amarillo, Texas, uh -huh. 
and there was a jam out there every Wednesday morning. Yeah. And um, just all these old guys and gals would go out there. You know, we'd have about half a dozen guitars, but mm -hmm. there was a drummer and a bass player and a piano player and a couple fiddle players and yeah. steel and uh, people played mandolin and stuff like that. And uh, and people would just go around the circle uh -huh. and sing a song, right? And 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 then. Invariably, what would happen is everyone would sing a song, but while they were singing, everybody on, in the whole room obviously was playing along with them. So it was, you know, we played a lot of old country songs, a lot of, yeah. uh, a lot of traditionals, you know. Um, most of the guys in the group were hardcore Bob Wills fans, and so it was a, mostly Texas Swing. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, things like that just... And, and I, honestly, playing along with those people, um, you know, I was the youngest guy by about, oh, I don't know, 40 years uh -huh. most, most days. Right. And uh, just getting to, to be around their experience, what they knew, you know, and they were always so willing to, well, some of them were willing to share what they did. <laughs> some of those guys got it the hard way. It's like, I ain't sure. But you know, getting to learn from those guys was huge, and it, it, yeah. it actually changed the way that I was playing guitar, and I would say it changed kind of my, uh, it definitely changed the trajectory that I had for where my music was able to go. Yeah. It in, gave me in a what whole way? New, well, it gave me a whole new set of tools mm -hmm. that I hadn't previ previously been using as much. Because, uh. um, like, um, the song on um, Dust Bowl Soul, uh, oops, let me, that walking bass, that thing right there, yeah. that's like, that's called Travis picking, right? Or Chet, Chet Atkins was also uh, a master uh -huh. of like, he would play a bass, but he'd also play. Right. Right. right, and so a lot of those guys, they were playing that kind of thing, like they were trying to do that, you know, most of those guys, couldn't care less for Jimi Hendrix. They thought Chet Atkins was the greatest guitar uh -huh. player of all time. Yeah. Right? They had big posters on their walls of Chet Atkins. <laughs> not Jimi. But like that's really they thought he was the guy, and so it was a lot of that. You know, a lot of the bar chords about mm -hmm. you know like. Like let's just going all the way up the neck. You know, yeah. and just I, a lot of that I picked up from those guys. Just mm -hmm. learned. Really, just watching them play circles around me, you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. and then just trying to pick up what I could and what they would give me. Did you ever get stuck down in the mud, down in the crud, feeling like a dud, feeling like you rolled the roughest rut they ever dug? Sometimes you get stuck down in the mud. A songwriter, songwriter, and a musician's musician. I think if you walk it the right way, it can be such a long and rewarding road. Yeah. Did you ever think the things you thought you knew were nothing new? Sometimes you fall so far you thought you flew. Here's Act Perform right after the break. The food, the fun, the sun. Texas Voices gives Ibis Bay Beach Resort two claws up. There's nothing else like it on the island. Adventure awaits, or take it easy, but step out of the ordinary and into a memory you'll have for a lifetime. Go to ibisbayresort.com to book today and tell them Texas Voices sent you. Let's hear it for Zach Wilkerson, everybody. I'm gonna start off with a song I wrote with my friend, uh, Courtney Patton. Fight. 
All you gotta do is hold me We'll be lonely together tonight Oh, let's be lonely together Musician Turner Harrison sits down in his brand new studio at Lost Boy Creations to tell the tale of the shipwreck that brought him here. Turner Harrison has traveled the world, but he calls Key West home, and he's building a community of artists at Lost Boy Creations. Turner Harrison has always known time is more valuable than any treasure you can amass. An adventure can't wait. If I could save time in a bottle. I literally blew in on the winds. I, uh, I was traveling the Caribbean on a boat that I bought on a whim. I shipwrecked for a few months in Cuba. Needed repairs, so got back to Key West a few months later and Never been here before. I literally um, anchored out when I, wherever I saw other boats anchored, which was next to Wisteria Island, and uh, dinghied in, left my dinghy um, on the half, sh half shell raw bar. Uh -huh. It's a restaurant, <laughs> and it got towed. Oh no! And I didn't have enough money to get it out of. <laughs> I didn't have mo enough money to get it out of the uh, pound. He calls it a classic Key West story. He met his wife, fell in love, and finds beauty in some things the world has forgotten. I love all old things. I try to wear vintage clothes, drive vintage cars, use vintage equipment. It's like I really have that terrible syndrome of believing that objects have a soul at some point. Yeah. Um, because of their history. Nostalgia for me is, is a drug.
Music is at the center of that universe, not the kind that you find inside the lines of a cookie cutter. His first band, punk, and then a touring reggae band, and now a little 70s psychedelic slash folk. But his roots date back to the Opry in Nashville. I grew up around a lot of country music and bluegrass. That was the family was into that stuff. But my parents specifically weren't. I would say they were into Motown a lot more and, um, and folk too, like 70s folk. And that's my era. I just live in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. A father-son moment set him on a course to continue pursuing life to the fullest. Even what could have been a misstep set him on a path of purpose. My father passed away the week before I moved to France. He supported that that's what I wanted to do. And, you know, I, I dropped out of high school. I was really, uh, we were butting heads. I was an angsty teenager. Mm -hmm. And I had a punk band to boot, you know? Yeah. He said, like, you should do it. That's what you want to do. Uh -huh. And it was hard for me to go because he had just passed away. And yeah. emotionally, I wasn't ready to go at all. And I just said, like, I'm not, I don't want to go. But my mom said, you should, you know, yeah, you you should. Should. you've made this commitment. You should go try it out. Mm -hmm. found a compass in the community in Key West and here at Lost Boy Creations where he created a studio and a place for live music to thrive. I think the word thrive is the one that I try to stick with. That's the simplest way I can say for myself like whatever I'm doing I want to thrive. I want to do well at it and I want everyone or I want the project to do well. Projects are really important to me. They're like kids you know mm -hmm. and if anything that I'm working on I want it to do well even if I lose out in the end you know mm -hmm. it's like not really important if I it doesn't really matter the, the players and the thing because we, we get old and die whatever but I want yeah. the project to have done the best it can mm -hmm. I, yeah. I never will stop for sure even if I'm broke you know yeah don't show this part to my wife <laughs> um, <laughs> Coming up, Texan Clay Hollis brings country to the Keys. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Clay Hollis has been making a splash on the Texas country music scene ever since he arrived from San Antonio. And we caught up with him right before a show here in Key West. <laughs> There's enough room in this industry for, for everyone to be successful and it's, you know, just, you have to do yourself, you have to be you and, and that's what I think I'm trying to do, still trying to find myself still like in my writing, in my music and uh, just, just trying to connect with an audience. A lot of it goes to like the way I was raised, where my mom raised me on country music, my dad raised me on rock and roll. So uh, I blend those two together, and that's kind of what you get. And it's, it's, a, it's a it's a more edgier, rocking, modern country sound. We like to push the limits and 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 try things that some people don't. We make it our own. That's yeah. that's that's what we do. Nobody's gonna give it to you, and, and I've known that for a long time. So you gotta go down and, and, and knock all the doors down yourself. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. For my debut single, Look Who's Hurting Now, to come out in 2017 and, and go top 10 as a debut artist was crazy. Really made me feel good, and it's just like, it's been an incredible ride since then. When I can connect with it myself and, and the fans are connecting through it, um, and the band loves to play it, and it's it's really it's really fun music. It's upbeat. It's just in your face country music. It's it's the Clay Hollis brand. I don't really know how else to say. I love that.
We've spent an amazing time here at Mile Zero Fest. We want to thank all of the wonderful musicians and artists that let us share their music and their stories, and especially Matt Atkinson and his crew at Lost Boy Creations and the fine folks here at Ivis Bay Beach Resort. Make sure you stay here next time you're in Key West. Check us out at TexasVoicesShow.com on social media, and you can watch full episodes on YouTube. We'll see you next time. A thousand miles of home.